Okay, welcome to our workbench. I'm going to go over the, uh, the Veritas plow box plane again and cover some stuff that I didn't cover last time. So last time I mentioned that this screw did not work to hold the fence. Well, I contacted Veritas and sure enough, it is supposed to, as one would expect. Um, and they sent me a new plane. And on this one, when I tighten this screw down, it does indeed lock the fence in place. I still don't like having to get the Allen key to adjust that. I would much sooner have a little brass knob to do it. But I guess there is very little clearance there. Anyway, I'll see if I can get some brass knobs. If I can, I'll let you know. Okay, let's go over the bits and pieces of the plane. The fence can go either left or right. It's designed to be right, but you can make it work left-handed. The fence itself can be taken off of the rods if you want. The wooden fence can be taken off with two screws, so you can put any kind of wooden fence on there that you want. For example, if you were left-handed, you could just take this fence and route out or cut out a little cutout for the skate, allowing you to get the metal part of the skate up to the fence, which would give you a blade clearance Do, do, do. Okay, right there. Gives you a blade clearance. Of an eighth. It's not bad. I'm not sure you'd want to go much closer, but if you raise the skate all the way up, you're not going to be able to get any kind of depth setting, but you can at least use it left-handed. However, right-handed, which is what the plane is designed for, you can go right up to the blade, even past the edge of the blade a little bit because of that recess they've got, and still use the depth adjustment. Okay. So there's the fence. Let's get that out of the way. Now the depth adjuster, just this little skate, little metal rod. It's threaded on the end, so you could add an extension to that or a little brass knob to help you move it or whatever floats your fancy. The skate is not that difficult to set. You just get it in the right place and then knurl it down. That's it for the skate. On the other side, we have two knurled knobs. The top knob locks the blade into position, sliding back and forth. This knob locks the blade in its lateral position. It doesn't allow it to move laterally. So you want to lock that down against the side of the blade, whichever size blade you have. And then use that to set the depth and lock it in place. As for blades, it takes any blade that will fit the combo planes, including the Stanley combo planes. And you can set this width retainer quite far out. Let's just go until it comes out. So with this length of screw, you can quite reasonably get a blade that is three quarters of an inch wide which is really wide for such a small plane. I don't think you'd want to try to push and control something much larger than that. 
the knob nut adjusts easily, although as you get in with the narrow blades, like the quarter inch blade that I'm using, this interferes with your finger grip, as does the shoe that holds the blade. The skate sits against the one edge of the blade, which really helps with the guiding. And that's about all there is to the plane. It's, uh, it's an absolutely excellent, very handy plane to have. Even if you have a combo plane, the reason to have one of these is if you're doing lots of like drawer or box work where you have inset or recessed lids or bottoms, this plane can be set up for that specific task. And then you can use your combo plane for decorative grooving or whatever that you need to do, rabbit or uh, OG edges or whatever else you want on your box or drawer. Well, having this set up and ready to go for doing the drawer inserts. Um, so you get your quarter inch bottom board, cut the hole, and you can see that fits absolutely brilliantly. It's firmly enough in there that it isn't going to fall out or pop out. And the width of the hole is absolutely, or groove, is absolutely wonderfully consistent. So all in all, excellent little plane. Okay, so we're going to set this up to do a quarter inch groove on the long grain side edge of this board. So first thing we need to do is we need to set our depth stop to a quarter of an inch. Pretty easy to do with this plane. There's a quarter of an inch. There's our depth stop. Let's double check it. Quarter inch. Okay. Now let's retract this blade to something more reasonable. Okay, we want this blade. We want to take a very, very fine cut indeed, as if we were using this plane normally. This is the one thing I find about all of these planes with drop-in blades is that the uh, setting the blade depth is always a little funky. That's probably too much. That's a good half a mil. Let's knock that back a bit. Alrighty. That's a couple of thousandths. Here's about a half of 30 seconds, so a 64th. Okay. Okay, so this board is three quarters of an inch wide. We want to go down the center of that, which is three eighths. Our blade is a quarter of an inch wide, so we want to go one eighth either side. So the blade nearest the fence needs to be a half inch, and the blade furthest from the fence needs to be, actually that's backwards, from the fence to the blade is a quarter. And from the 
blade to the outside of the fence is a half inch. Okay. Okay, let's check that. Fence to the inside. Quarter inch. Fence to the outside. Half an inch. Middle, three eighths. Okay, let's tighten it down. Okay, I really do like the feel of this plane. The the grip at the back is really very comfortable and positive. It gives you good places to put your fingers, keep them out of the way. This side has a nice curve underneath to place your fingers and your thumb on here. Or you can put your whole thumb in that arc and lean it on the front. And then your fingers are well distributed. Okay, so if we're going to start this traditional way... We got too much blade out. So right now we're taking a really very thick chip. We want considerably less than that. The setting of the blade is very positive. The whole edge here registers positively against the blade, so that's very comfortable. This screw is a bit stiff, yuck. but the edge, as you can see, that edge right inside there needs to push up against the side of the blade that registers the blade okay now let's see where we're at if you wanted to use this plane left-handed there is absolutely nothing stopping you Except finding the uh, hex key. Okay, so if we want to use the plane left-handed, what you're going to wind up with is... Okay, so I'll turn this upside down so you can see. The skate, the depth skate, is on the left-hand side. So as you bring it in, the skate, depending on what depth you've got it set at, will bump up against the fence. At the setting that I have it, a quarter inch deep, it is just going to bump into the fence. But if I wiggle that fence down a little bit within the play of the screws, I can easily overcome that and set the fence at a quarter of an inch left-handed. It's going to be a bit deeper than a quarter of an inch. It's going to be hard to see in there, but it looks like it's about an eighth, no, maybe a sixteenth over. So now the plane is set left-handed, and I still have the use of the skate. If I wanted to make that skate run shallower, I could easily cut the groove in the fence deeper to accept the shape of the skate. Right now we have in the fence we have a groove cut into the fence halfway in that is for the blade. It's a lot larger than the blade, a lot larger than it really needs to be. But uh, this accommodates the blade both right and left. So that's why it's done like that. But 
you'll notice that the fence will go, the skate goes more forward than the blade and it's a lot deeper. So you could cut out the fence to accommodate the skate, allowing you to use the skate to set your depth properly, regardless of how wide your groove is, allowing you to use the plane completely left-handed. Okay, I've got this thing all set up, ready to go. A uh, quarter inch deep, quarter inch wide, quarter inch away from the edge, quarter inch wide, and a quarter inch deep. Okay, so traditionally, you start at the end, taking little shavings and deepening your groove gradually. And this is in order to make sure that your plane gets a good start and sits in the groove well and creates a nice line. Now, I haven't marked this out beforehand, which you could certainly do, but with this plane, you don't really need to. The fence registers very well, and the, fen and the uh, plane is very positive in your hand. So you don't even really need to do that, starting that way. You can, with this, you can start at the end and just start taking your shavings, and you're going to get a very good line with very little resistance. This is old Douglas fir. Bit of a trim board left over. So as you can see, we're getting really good shavings all the way through. Full length shavings. And the line is perfect all the way along. There is no step, no little shelf. There is no tear out along the edge. If I take a thicker shaving, I'll get some tear out. But if you're just blowing through these things, this plane is perfectly capable of taking a great thick shaving. So there it is, cutting lines. go. Veritas box plane, cutting grooves. Okay, so here's the quarter inch bottom that I'm using for this box. Um, it's going to be have a nice cedar bottom, but as you can see, that fits in there perfectly, and no, no, uh, no, distance showing between the edge of the board and the uh, and the plank sits into that groove perfectly. Okay, my conclusions about the plane. The hand grip is really comfortable and as you can see it's completely symmetrical so it will work equally left or right handed. The fence is shaped Ideally, for my fingers, someone with larger fingers could easily use it in, in that configuration. This shape is ideal for your thumb, and it gives you good stability control. You have to remember that when you're using a plane that you're not trying to force it. You're just trying to control it. So you don't need a death grip on the plane. You just need to be able to direct the plane keeping the fence firmly against the board. And with the hand grip you want to put it in the palm of your hand so that as you go you're, you're pressing on the plane but only with enough force to make it go which is not very much force at all. I could easily do it with this plane, with that size of cut, with maybe even one finger. And let's try that. One finger keeping the fence, one finger pushing the plane. Yeah. So 
you can see how little force it requires, how well the design is articulated. The set screw for the depth holds the blade firmly in place. The lateral screw for the fence holds the blade firmly in place and doesn't allow it to skew. The depth stop holder is more than strong enough. Everything about this is just pretty much as good as it can get. The only complaint that I have is I would sooner have these as little neural knobs that you could turn. There's not a lot of clearance in there, but if you had a narrow knurled knob, you could use these set screws with your thumb instead of having to find the Allen key, which I am constantly losing on my bench, even though I tell myself I will put it in a specific spot. All in all, I really like this plane. I think that Veritas has yet again delivered another excellent tool. Thanks for watching, and remember, hit that like and subscribe button.